protesters on Seattle's Capitol Hill are fighting for change from the police and city. Police responding to a shooting overnight in the occupied zone, the country known as CHOP, formerly known as CHAZ. 65 offenses have been reported in the CHOP zone since June 8th. Like in North Korea on Puget Sound, we can only guess snippets of information leak out, supplemented by daring acts of investigation. I think a lot of people, they see the aftermath, but they don't realize it was born from 10 plus straight days of protests right in your face, day in and day out. I myself were out there six straight days before the police left and some sort of chop came in. A lot of us who were there and had a totally different experience than what was shared publicly um, and and it's kind of, it's like crazy, you know, the stuff that was going on that nobody heard about. What's poppin' everybody? My name is Marshall. I'm in a band called the Marshall Law Band, and uh, down there at CHOP and before CHOP, uh, myself and my bandmates and a lot of our friends uh, brought music and uh, music activism to the protest down there at CHOP. But you know what's crazy about CHOP is like, it, it like called you down there. I'd have multiple conversations with people and it was like, you just could if you'd been down there once, then you couldn't stay away. Yeah. Um, and when you were there, it, like time just like disappeared. Like you would be there for an entire day with no intention of doing that or, or you know, late into the night um, just because, I don't know, it was just, it was a really weird feeling. Um, I've never had that feeling before in anything. Everyone kind of trusted me from all walks of life, the, the hood, the, you know, random white people, you know, people checking it out. There were people just literally like tents and mutual aid stations and protests and all that, you know. It's been a real interesting year, I would say. I think it was sort of maybe the mid-June period uh, before some of the more extreme shootings happened um, and some of the real safety concerns started to rear their head where it kind of felt like a really great community um, opportunity. What CHOP uh, embodied for me was a response to nine or 12 straight days of protest in response to George Floyd's murdering and the uh, re, you know, uh, uh, revitalization of the Black Lives Matter movement, people getting behind that message and understanding that things need to change and police reform needs to occur immediately. That's what I was out there fighting for. We had speakers of all types, people like uh, Dan Gregory, who um, was the person who stopped the speeding car uh, and uh, got shot at the protest. June 7th comes and I'm supposed to be at work that morning, you know. Uh, something told me not to go to work and be at this protest. And as he's coming close to me, like, like getting right in front of me, that's when I was like, okay, he's gonna go for that car. I, it's hard to trust people now, you know what I mean? And it's really hard to express myself. People wanna know, like, what's in my mind, like, yeah. you know what I mean? But we, we soon, well, as soon as crazy stuff started going on, um, you saw who was, you know, like people were just volunteering to do stuff. I don't need to stop recording. Why would you want this recording? Put that lead, this is my. So please. He said it like what they're qualified to do. So it was like there were some medics running away when someone got hurt, there was security running away when, you know, a gun situation happened. But we saw a heel up collecting, speaking of the devil. That's crazy, man. <laughs> it was probably for like somebody not wearing a seatbelt. Yeah. <laughs> They're not helping nobody, I'll tell you that. How the police responded to that, I think, created issues that didn't need to exist or made them worse. And I'm not saying that SPD 
the East Precinct in particular, who I have a relationship with as a business owner, a longtime business owner here and resident, you're just asking for real retribution. You know, people were not going to take that and tolerate that. And I think there were some avoidable mistakes in handling the whole situation, certainly. Yeah, I was, it went off like, if I'm standing here, it went off like right there. I'm a bad guy, but like, <laughs> I was, it like shot into a group of people I met. Out of nowhere, we turn around, and I remember seeing the tank. There was a tank <laughs> barreling in on us. I remember seeing a tank just like slowly turn around. I'm like, oh, they're bringing the tank. You know, I'm singing, but I'm like, you know, I'm also evaluating while I'm singing. Like, and that next day, as a result of all the terrible press doing. that they got, they threw a flashbang that night and literally killed a woman who got revived. We talk about it in our, in our song, Ain't Enough. Like, she literally got revived multiple times and is alive and from a flashbang that hit her in the chest. God damn. Put it up, put it up, put it up. You need help? We really did not expect, I mean, it's not surprising, but the uh, level of violence with the police departments, like tear gassing and everything, the pushback was really intense. Uh, I, I don't think the SPD, they were a little, way too heavy handed, you know, all the way through. We could have avoided the whole negative issues if it would have been more, because it wasn't violent at first. Everyone was operating on their own. There was no one org, there was no one leader, there was no one thing that you could go to and get like, you know, a collective agreement on. Um, and so they would really take advantage of that and like hit at a time when they knew only certain individuals were gonna be there, you know, who had been there all night long, dealing with all of the things, were tired, you know, like 5 a.m. They would come, hit those people up and be like, here's what we're gonna do, and they would do it. Um, and that's how those barricades ended up, um, like in the middle of the street. And once that happened, it shifted the whole entire vibe of, of CHOP. Like, people started falling off, people fucking with the other people it was like well you're supposed to do this and you didn't do that like the accountability started to, started to like change people's you know view of why they were out there and it you know it just got crazy because at that point everyone's trying to like dox everybody everyone's trying to like call someone a misogynist <laughs> and after there after that happened is when like all of a sudden i started to experience um you know people like coming after me like and verbally right like where they're trying to you know be involved with what we're doing and then when they're in that space like completely like derailing things we know based on history that um those who seek to oppress people especially black people and anytime black liberation is at the forefront um we know that oppressors will use any means necessary to keep us oppressed. What I felt as someone who was attempting to bring people together um, was that there were just individuals who were like pe placed there probably. It felt like they were placed there to like completely derail us. You know, I think they also realized like it was turning into something that was not necessarily intended to be or wasn't necessarily productive to the cause. And that's always a, a challenge, I think, when these things take a life of their own, right? <clears throat> so I don't blame the initial organization and organizers. I don't blame the people who came in day after day out with the right intentions and demanded things that needed to happen. To see every race, every walk of life, young, you know, kids, four-year-olds, you know, seeing all that out there, like, that's what the world is scared of, the unity. And, you know, when we do have unity, like, um, I'm not religious, but I believe, you know, I got a faith. When the world, every race, every species can coincide uh, with each other and get along, you know, that's when it's showing up. So it was like that, I feel like, just having that thought in my head, that's what the world was scared of. Like, what happens when we have a, a million people out there marching together and the cops have a thousand? I definitely saw a community come together in a way that I haven't. Um, the black community I saw come together in a real way. Um, organizations and individuals come together in a real way. So if nothing else, um, I saw community come together and that's really what I was looking for. I believe and I know that CHOP's legacy is that of hope and optimism. You know, from what I experienced and the energy that I saw out there, 
people do care about other people. They genuinely do. Everyone was finding a role and a purpose. And what CHOP represents are when people do find a role and people do find a purpose, you can work together to accomplish your goal in a unique fashion. Better, better, better. Oh.